How many are thankful for being in the house of the Lord? Now, I don't know what you're tripping through, but I can tell you this, in the world you shall have tribulation. So if you're tripping, I got good news. Jesus Christ should be of good cheer. He's overcome the world, amen. And I'm thankful for that. I'm glad that we're overcomers in Jesus' name. Praise God. Um, the eighth chapter of Romans says that that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead shall also quicken our mortal bodies. And I believe no matter where we are, no matter what place we are at, when the Lord returns, we've got enough Jesus unction and energy to split this planet Earth just gone, like an atom, just out of here, and receive the blessings of the Lord. I'm excited about the fact that the Lord might show up before I'm through preaching. And I already got a rise out of some of you right there. You like that idea, don't you? Isaiah 40, verse 28. Question, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall or fail. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and be not weary. They shall walk and not faint. I draw your attention to verse 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I want to use for a subject tonight, renewed strength. You may be seated. I can't begin to tell you and begin to express to you the power that is in this room. The power that is in God's word. As a Christian, the power that is inside of you. It was Apostle Paul who said to that diamond church called Ephesus in chapter 3 verse 20, now unto him that is able to do, God is able to do, exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. I'm grateful for the fact that God did not save us and leave us powerless. He came and saved us with great power and he left in our hearts great power and great praise and great victory. I'm glad that I'm not just thrown out to the wolves I'm glad that I'm not just out there making my own way. Jesus is my way and my truth and my life. And I'm thankful for the fact that Jesus Christ gives me strength as I go. Um, we fuel up, we eat food, we fuel up with breakfast, dinner, and supper, and we give our body energy. I take the word of God and I... Fuel up with the Word of God, with the Spirit of God. And the Word of God keeps me happy. The Word of God keeps me sane. Hello. The Word of God keeps me thrilled. And the presence of God just delights my soul with joy unspeakable and full of glory. So no matter where you are in life, no matter where you're at in your position today, there's enough power in your heart to take you to where you need to be and to lift you to the place you need to be lifted. God promised he would never leave us without comfort. He'd never leave us without that grace of God and that mercy of God. Jesus Christ ever liveth to make intercession for every Christian in this room. Wow. I'm surprised some of you ain't shouted out of your shoes by now. That is so good. 
and so fabulous, amen? Don't misunderstand me. We probably wouldn't want you to shout out of your shoes because your shoes probably would make a bulldog roll over if it sniffed it. Hello. <laughs> I know mine would. Jesus Christ talks about, and th this, uh, I'll, I'll draw your attention to verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord. And so we find uh, four things that we can look at. The people who trust God, but they. The world's falling apart, but they that are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ will never fall apart. The world is doomed to, to disaster, but they that trust the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So we have the people who trust God, but they that wait upon the Lord. And then we have the person of God, our mighty God, but they that wait upon the Lord. And remember the old timers used to say all the time, just trust the good Lord. Just trust in the good Lord. And he is a good Lord, isn't he? And then we find also the power of God, not just the person of God and the trust, people who trust God, but the power of God. They shall renew their strength. And then we have the promise of God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. Hey, up's always better than down. Hello. The gas tank goes up in the car, that's better than going down. Right? <laughs> the bank account goes up, that's better than going down. And as a Christian, it's always better to go up unless you're going down to get up, and that is on your prayer bones, on your knees to talk to the Lord. But the Bible's very clear that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. Everybody say up. That's the way we want to go, amen? When I leave this old planet, I don't want to go down. I want to go up, amen? Like the guy that said, I'm taking all my money with me. I refuse to leave my money behind. And the old geezer saved up his money and he told his wife, I'm taking it with me when I go. When I die, my money's going with me. And so he put it up in the attic. And he said, now when I'm gone, I'll catch it on the way up. Well, the old geezer died, and the lady, the, the wife forgot about it. And finally it, it dawned on her, he said that he would catch that on the way up, that money. And she went up there and looked, and sure, as sure as she saw it, there's all the money still there, nothing's been touched. She said, that's just what I thought. The old cook went the other direction. I'm glad that we're going up, amen. And don't want to go down. When I get in an elevator at the hospital and that, that, that sweet voice says, going up, I like that. But then you can't trust an elevator that sounds like a woman when you get in it and it says, going down. But I like going up. How many like going up? Up's better, it's always better. And uh, the Bible says that we shall mount up with wings. And that with wings is not angel wings. Amen? I met a guy one time, he honestly thought that when we died, we would just be transformed into little fat naked angels. He believed that. And, and you know what? There's not little fat naked angels flying around in heaven. They are incredible beings that can do mighty and spectacular things as God gives them orders, amen. And if you don't get no wings down here, you ain't gonna get no wings up there. I don't need wings, I've got Jesus. And there's nothing said where Jesus had wings when he left. When he left and went back to the Father, he didn't have wings. And by the way, the angels didn't have wings either. Amen. But you and I as Christians, we have wings as an eagle. And we can get above the atmospheric pressure 
and we can fly like an eagle up high, high, high above the storms. And we can look down and say, Woohoo, I'm glad I'm not down there. Right? The Bible says we shall mount up with, with wings like that of an eagle. And not only shall we mount up and fly, but we shall run and be not weary. Shoot, I can't even walk without getting weary. But it says we'll run and not get weary. And we'll walk and not faint. I want to talk to you, about, talk to you a little bit about they. And how many in this room would like to be they that wait upon the Lord? I, I'm, I, I want to say I'm one of them. I, I want to say that I'm they that trust in the Lord. And I want to point out four times it says, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall mount up with wings. They shall run and be not weary. They shall walk and not faint, but they. The world around us is crumbling. And those that don't, do not know Jesus Christ, their life is horrific. But they that has experienced the love of God, but they that has experienced the blessing of God, they, you and I, shall renew our strength. Jesus Christ said, in, and I don't want to give the first service the preaching away, but Jesus Christ said to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. And so Pilate was saying in that 18th chapter of St. John, Jesus was saying to Pilate, there's another world and I'm king of kings and lord of lords of that kingdom and I shall be totally king of kings and lord of lords over this planet as well. But at that avenue in his voice to Pilate, he said, my kingdom's not of this world. He said, if my kingdom was of this world, then my servants would fight for me. Yeah. And we know his servants is not Peter. He can't even hit the head. He just got the ear with the sword. We know the servants there he's speaking of as the angelic beings, the power of angels. Because Jesus Christ said to Pilate, don't you know that I could call 12 legions of angels to come to my rescue? 12 legions of angels. Now, if you study out legions on the Roman uh, mathematic table, that's about 72,000 angels. 72,000 angels. I used to think I wanted to see an angel. I've decided now I'd rather see them when I get over there. Because the story is told, how many remember the king called Hezekiah? And Hezekiah was facing a battle. There was a king called Sennacherib. Now that's the name you give Taco Bell when they ask your name. Sennacherib. I usually tell them Methuselah, but anyway, Sennacherib's a good name. Well, actually it's a bad name. He's a bad king. But Sennacherib was king of Assyria. And Sennacherib threatened Hezekiah and said, we're going to grind you to powder. We're going to destroy you. And Hezekiah takes the letter that he receives and spreads it before the Lord and says, Lord, here's the letter. You've got trouble. What are you going to do about it? And the Lord said, let me show you what I'm going to do about it. And during the night, Sennacherib with his Assyrian army. An angel comes and smokes during the night 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. Smote them dead. One angel. Now you know why I don't want to meet him until I get there. One angel wiped out 185,000 Assyrian armies. Uh, soldiers. And um, Jesus Christ said, I could call 72,000 angels to my rescue. He could have called many more than that, but he was just using 12 legions. And um, when, I, when I stopped to think about it, how many would agree that those 12 legions of angels were more than willing to come and 
take Jesus off the cross. They were more than willing to fight for Jesus. I mean, all Jesus had to do was lift his little finger and it was over. Because Jesus could wipe out the universe with one utterance. Because Jesus is God Almighty. And so when you look at that, Jesus said, I could bring 12 legions of angels to my rescue. If one angel can destroy 185,000 Assyrian soldiers, what do you think 72,000 of them could do? Come on. I believe that one angel can destroy totally planet Earth if God let them do it. One angel could destroy the whole planet. You say, how do you believe that? Well, I believe that according to the book of Revelation, angels held the winds of the east and west and south and north awaiting the wrath of God in Revelation. And so I do believe that one angel can destroy an entire planet, and I believe that four angels can destroy an entire solar system. You say, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that angels are ministering spirits watching out for our well-being. Now just snuggle up in that bug for uh, uh, like a bug in a rug. Snuggle up in that. Amen? I mean, well, that's good news. Hello? So the next time the devil tries to mess with you, you just say, hey, listen, I'm not of this world. Amen? And I don't have 72,000 angels inside of me, and I don't have, I don't have a, a mighty archangel inside of me, but I've got Jesus Christ, the Lord of all the angels, the Lord of all the universe. I've got Jesus Christ inside of me, and I think Jesus is well capable of taking care of me. Amen. And he's well capable of taking care of you. And so we wait upon the Lord, and he renews our strength. Amen. Come on now. Give me an amen, it won't last so long. It'll be shorter. If you get in and say amen, 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 I won't preach so long. There's always one old hound dog that wants to bark. <laughs> when the trouble comes, and I wouldn't say that, but me and Chuck are good friends. We are, aren't we? Yes, we are. Psalm, Psalm 46 verse 10 says that when everything begins to fall apart, be still and know that I am God. That's what, Jesus, that's what God says, be still and know that I'm God. That word be still means don't chew your fingernails. And if you're in really bad shape, don't chew your toenails. Hey, don't look at me like that. Now, come on, come on, give me a break. I am what I am. And sometimes I come across kind of like a country boy, but that's all right. I said, that's all right. We're just a little country church. We're not a highfalutin place. People see me on television all the time, and one question I always ask, how many people you got going there? And I said, well, we've got, oh, well, maybe 10 or 12. Because, <laughs> you know, I really don't give a flip in numbers. I'm not really that caught up in numbers. What I would really like to see is each one individually get what they need from the Lord every time they walk through these doors. Right? That's what I really want. Now, I'm not making excuses for little crowds. We had good crowds this morning, good crowd uh, the second service, and pretty good crowd for uh, Sunday night. Amen? And I always pray that the Lord would return on a Sunday night. Hello, come on. And so there's the people that trust God. How many in this room are of the people that trust God? But they that wait upon the Lord, that's trusting God. They that trust God, the person, the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon God, they that trust our Lord, and they that depend on our Lord 
shall renew their strength. And there's times when I just need some strength renewed. Anybody in this room, sometimes you need your strength renewed. I really do. You say, why? Because I leak. My battery drains. Why? Because I leave my lights on all the time. What do you think? Come on. Pat got that and the rest of you didn't. I'm I'm impressed. <laughs> and so I need strength. I need my battery charged. Anybody ever needed your battery charged? Anybody ever got so tired? Oh my, oh man. Oh man, I gotta go to church. Yeah. I was up at 3 30 this morning and I said to myself, self bad morning but I went and looked in the mirror and I looked at the cuckaburs on my face and I said self we're going to brush hog that and we're going to church and so I brush hog that and went to church and here when I get home tonight I'll need to brush hog it again because I have a beard that grows quickly in fact, one of these days, I'm threatening while you're between church services, I grow a full-blown mustache, and you'll think, oh, my, what's happened? But we wait upon the Lord, and I need strength. I need God to help me. And I, 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 what we need to understand is that strength doesn't always come from without. That strength comes within as we look to God. Amen. The power of God is inside of each born-again Christian. Notice Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Mm. I just felt some more strength coming. Amen. The Bible says in Philippians 4 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Listen to this, in Ephesians 3, 16 and 17. That he would grant you, this is a prayer that Paul is speaking to Ephesus, that he would grant you according to the riches of God's glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. The spirit of God is in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted, that means planted like a tree by the rivers of water, and being grounded, I mean built on a solid rock, you be rooted and grounded in love. Isn't that good? The Old Testament, Psalms 84 verse seven, says they go from strength to strength. And I've read that verse of scripture and I've memorized it. I've looked at it. They go from strength to strength. And I used to think, well, they, we go from our strength and then we go to his strength. That's usually how it works. We go to our strength and then to his strength. But I don't think that's necessarily what he's trying to say here. Because in this Psalm 84, the previous verse says, while they travel through the valley of Baca. And it says, as they travel through the valley of Baca to go to the holy city, they say, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. And he says, as they travel through the valley of Baca, and Baca means the valley of weeping, of shattered hope, of shattered dreams. Baca means the valley of heartbreak, the valley of bitter tears. And the psalmist says, as they go, there it is, they that wait upon the Lord, there it is, as we go through the valleys of 
trials and the valleys of persecution, we go from strength to strength. That's how people live to be 90 years old. They go from strength to strength. That's how you're as old as you are right now because you went from strength to strength. But spiritually speaking, we need to go from strength to strength in the Spirit of God. Come on. And so we go from strength to strength. That means worshiping the Lord. That means having faith in God. That means trusting the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That means trusting God when everything's going wrong, to just trust the Lord. Why? Because we are planted by the rivers, like a tree by the rivers of water. The Bible says that we may dwell, faith may dwell in our heart, that ye may be rooted, that means planted by the rivers of God, and, and grounded, that means built as a house on the solid rock, God's word in love. I come to another statement. The Bible says, talks about the promises of God. We see them in this verse 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. How many in this room need some renewed strength? Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, if we wait upon the Lord, we shall mount up with wings as an eagle. We'll be able to get above the storms, above the atmospheric pressure of storms. We shall not only mount up, but we shall get energy. We shall run and be not weary. Did you know running takes energy? We shall run and be not weary. And not only shall we run and be not weary, we get energy, we also receive the power to hold out, to just keep walking. They shall walk and not faint. I want to come to the last little thought as the Spirit of God laid on my heart today. In the second Kings chapter four, verse one through seven, is the story of a woman who was married to a young prophet. The story of this woman who was married to a young prophet, they had two little boys, and those little boys were probably the pride and joy of their life. This prophet was known as the prophet of Elisha. Something happened, and this young prophet died. They were in debt. And because they were in debt, back then they had debtor's prison or debtor's uh, slavery, debtor's uh, where they would buy them and make them pay off the debt by making them work it off. Aren't you glad we don't have debtor's prison today? And uh, so this woman, she's a widow now, Her heart is busting, she's lonely, she's fearful, she's afraid, and she has two young boys in her home. And they're in debt. And the authorities send word to her and said, we're going to take your two boys, and they're going to work the debt off, and we're gonna make them work, and take care of the bill that you owe, and you're pretty much on your own. There with her broken heart, she didn't know what to do. But she knew what it what meant to wait on the Lord. Because the first thing she did is she went to the Lord through the prophet Elisha. And when she went to the Lord through the prophet Elisha, Elisha knew. And Elisha said, what do you need? And she said, I have two little boys. And we're in debt. And you know my husband, he died. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with my life. I don't have anything and my boys are gonna be taken away and I don't know what to do. And Elisha said, you did good, you came to me. You did right. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And he says to that little widow, tell me something, tell me about your home. What do you have in your house? And she says, well, in the way of what? I have two sons and, and you know, I just, uh, I'm just a poor person and get, just barely getting by. He said, no, 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 what do you have in your house of value? And she says, I have just a little bottle of oil. 
And that little bowl of oil is the presence of God. It is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And Elisha says to that little widow, here's what you do. You've got a little bowl of oil. Here's what you do. Send the boys out to go house to house, borrow vessels, and borrow not a few. Borrow empty vessels all over the neighborhood. Don't borrow a few. Borrow not a few. Borrow a lot. And when you borrow those vessels and those tubs and those jars and those, those clay pottery vessels, when you borrow everything you can borrow, bring it into the house. And I can just see her living room just covered with empty jars everywhere. Just, just barrels empty and vessels empty everywhere in the house. The kitchen is full and the living room is full and the bedroom is full. And you can't even walk through the house because there's empty vessels everywhere. And Elisha says, trust God. Go into your house and shut the door. Shut the door in the presence of that bottle of oil and trust God. And she went into that room and she shut the door with her two boys. And Elisha said, you take that bottle of oil and you pour it into the vessels. And you just keep pouring. I don't know, maybe that vessel, a little bottle of oil was maybe that tall. And she poured and filled up a vessel that big. She just poured until it got to the top, and another boy scooted another vessel, and she just kept pouring. Another one brought another vessel. She just kept pouring maybe two or three hundred vessels. She just kept pouring the oil, and out of that one little bottle, let me tell you, out of that one Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, that one Spirit that we all drink of, that one Spirit that God has given us, for we are all baptized by that one Spirit into the body of Christ, that one spirit, that Holy Spirit, she pours and she pours and she pours and she pours and you will never exhaust the power and the presence of God. You will never use up, you will never exhaust the, the flow of God's blessing, you'll never, he said shut the door, close the door, private, get in, get in the, with your boys, pour the oil and keep pouring the oil and she poured the oil and she poured it and she poured it and she poured it till that house was as, uh, as full as it could be and finally the boy comes running with one more pot and she pours it to the top and she says, quick, get me another one and one of the boys said, mom, there is no more, they're all full. And so she tells Elisha what happened. And Elisha says, well, you're getting ready to go into the oil business. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. And Elisha says to the woman, sell all the oil and pay off the debt and then live on the rest for the rest of your life. You are retired. Now, retired means relax. I said retired means relax. It doesn't mean 15 grandchildren trying to chase them through the house. Retired means, and I love my grandbabies. I tell you what, I'd die for my grandbabies. They're awesome. I mean, that's what God gave me as a reward to grandbabies for not killing my children. I love my grandbabies. But being retired means you're supposed to take it easy. Relax. Amen? Well, I'm just bored. I, I think I'll get another job. I'm just bored. Try me. I ain't going to get bored. I retire. I'll never be bored. And if you're bored, we have a vacuum sweeper, two of them back there. If you're bored, we have bathrooms to scrub. If you're bored, I need you to pray for me about three weeks of fasting and prayer. If you're bored, well, I used to tell my dad, I'm bored. And my dad would tell me in the summer, well, there's a garden out there full of weeds. Pull them. I said, Dad, I'm not bored. 
He said, you told me you're bored. Get out there and pull them. I learned to quit telling my dad I was bored. Amen. And so this woman, she hits retirement. What does it mean by retirement? It means that she can relax. The children are okay. The home's okay. The bills are paid. Everything's okay because God is still on the throne. All because she waited on the Lord and the Lord renewed her strength and she mounted up with new energy, new vision, new purpose in life. And she mounted up with wings. And she began to soar like an eagle. And she ran and not got weary. And she walks and not faints. Because our God knows how to renew our strength. Just trust God. Just trust God. Amen? I said, just trust God. You said, but I got a bill due in three weeks. Oh, you poor thing. Three weeks? Well, I, you know, before I was saved, now this was me before I was saved. My car payment had to be paid four payments in advance or I stressed out. I always paid bills double or I stressed out. The Lord saved me, give me eternal life, and now I never stress out about the bills. I say, here, Judy, here they are. Take care of it. I got business at the church to do. (laughs) Judy, my wife. And she don't stress out either because she's more than a conqueror. I bring in the paycheck and she takes the check more than a conqueror. She takes over. She casts that baby and takes care of things. Listen to me. Don't stress out. Wait on the Lord. Trust him. He's a good father. I said he's a good father. And he said very clearly in Romans chapter 8, he that gave his own son, the father gave his son Jesus and gave him up for us all. Shall he not with his own son freely give us all things? I got to take care of us. I said I got to take care of us. If you're overheated, chill out. If you're too cold, warm up. Just trust the Lord. I'm trusting Him. How about you? Just clear you off a spot and say, I'm going to trust the Lord. I'm going to believe the Lord. And God's going to give me a new transfusion of strength. I'm going to be strong. Amen? I'm going to be strong. I know what it is to get the strength of God. When I was in that bad car wreck head on and it just about killed me, crushed my whole right side, busted just about every bone in my right side of my body. I know what it is to suffer. I know what it is not to be able to walk. I know what it is to crawl on this floor to get up on the platform. But God never, never forsook me. And God never, and I never complained. I never complained about the pain. I never complained about what happened to me. I never complained. Because what good would it do anyway? And why should I complain? I'm alive. Amen. 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 And I could have been in heaven seeing them big fellas that can kill 185,000 men in, in one night. And I'm looking for, the Lord told me before I leave planet earth, the Lord told me this years ago, he said, son, before you leave earth, you're going to get to see an angel. Well, I got to say this to the Lord. Can we just retract that? (laughs) Amen. I just soon pass that and by. Amen. Come on. I ain't that eager to get around something that powerful. I've got Jesus in my heart. He'll take care of me and. Besides that, it was them burgers that messed up and fell from heaven, you know. We just can't trust anybody anymore. You can't even trust an angel. (laughs) Hello. And if you can't trust an angel, you dead sure can't trust a Pentecostal. And if you can't trust an angel, you can't trust a Baptist. 
And if you can't trust an angel, you can't trust a Methodist. If you can't trust an angel, you can't trust anybody. Right? And you can't trust an angel. But you can trust Jesus. You can trust Jesus. And when I get to heaven, I won't have a problem with bad angels up there because they'll all be sorted out. Amen? They'll be sorted out in the lake of fire. They'll all be sorted out. And I can just have a wonderful time in the Lord. Amen? I'll look at one of them big fellas, and I'll say, can I get on your shoulders and ride around a little while? And the angel will probably say to me, there's horses here. Right? I've got to quit preaching. I, 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 I've got to stop. I've got to stop. I've got to stop. But it feels so good. Amen. Stand with me. We're glad you came. I mean, glad you came. I mean, got some more energy in your heart now. Safety and strength and blessing in your heart. Because God, if you're a Christian, you're on good terms. You're a Christian, you're in a good place. If you're a Christian, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, relax. If you're a Christian, just shout and praise God and give God glory and be happy about what God has done for you. If you're a Christian, just chill out. Just warm up to the love of God. If you're a Christian, it's going to be okay. God's going to take care of you. In my Father's house are many mansions. God's going to take care of you. If you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, you better run up here really fast because you're in bad shape. Amen. Altars open. Josh is going to play and sing. <laughs>